So should, so should we start? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tarun. Uh, in today's talk, we'll talk about the Dragonfly operator. So I think uh, the lunch was good. So hopefully my session also follows that. Uh, so about me, uh, my name is Tarun. Uh, and I'm working remotely from Hyderabad. So I work at a company called Dragonfly DB. And the project that we're talking about um, is also very related to the work that I do. Uh, previously, I was at Gitpod and also at Linkerd. Um, I'm an amateur runner and also I like my coffee, just like a lot of folks here. You can follow me on Twitter or, or also on my website here. Mm. So first, yeah, before we talk about the Dragonfly operator, we need to talk about what Dragonfly is, right? Uh, so Dragonfly is an open source in-memory store, right? Uh, it's like Redis. It supports the same API, but it tries to do a better job at the whole caching layer. Uh, so it's a drop-in replacement, and, and you can expect like much better performance, reliability, uh, than many other tools out there. Uh, so why Dragonfly? Uh, so Dragonfly essentially scales vertically better, right? Uh, after, with Redis and a lot of other alternatives, after like a specific your QPS, you have to horizontally scale. And with Dragonfly, we try to not do that, essentially, by making efficient use of cores, all the modern algorithms, modern hardware, et cetera. So on the same instance, you would get a uh, significantly better performance out of Dragonfly than you would get with Redis. And that's the whole idea. So now, uh, what's, what, like how is Dragonfly related to Kubernetes? Uh, so Dragonfly ships as a binary and a container image, right? And you know where a lot of people run your container images. It's Kubernetes. So, so essentially, it makes the team and like the community of Dragonfly responsible to have like a better experience when they're running on Kubernetes, right? And that's where like our, our whole journey started uh, to focus on Kubernetes. Mm. So essentially, it makes sense to build relevant tools to maintain, manage Dragonfly uh, on Kubernetes. So obviously, we, like many other applications and users, we started out with the Helm chart, right? Helm, chart has, Helm charts are simple, they're easy to use. A lot of users love them. Uh, it, it's all good. But uh, it, it only works you're great for your stateless and like static applications, right? If you want to do something uh, more on the management layer for your application, Helm charts do fall flat because they don't do much there. Like, and even even if you have to like have your own logic, some kind of like dynamic logic there, uh, then they, uh, there's no option. Uh, they do good on the templating side, right? The users can like give their configuration and get a uh, and get Kubernetes manifests on the other side. That do a simple job, but that's not all. Uh, that's not that's not the only useful part, right? A lot of applications and especially databases, they need a lot more management. Uh, around their life cycle, around their state, etc. So for that, uh, Helm charts don't do a good job, and and the reason why we see a lot of operators around databases, applications, uh, out there in open source. For specifically, uh, Dragonfly, Dragonfly requires like a lot of automatic failover uh, and other features. They do they do need an external component that configures them uh, and makes sure uh, the configuration gets updated through the lifecycle of Dragonfly instances. Uh, if, if if you're familiar with Redis, there's a whole project around this called the Redis Sentinel, right? Which essentially, when you have like multiple Redis instances, uh, it is the component that runs Redis commands, makes sure that like all the Redis instances are are configured correctly, who's the master, who's the replica, all those things. Uh, but when we had the same challenge, uh, so, so because Dragonfly is compatible with Redis, you can, you can use Redis with a Dragonfly and get all the benefits. But we have always, like whenever we spoke to like any of the Redis uh, Sentinel users on Kubernetes, uh, they did not like the experience. It's because Redis Sentinel uh, knows Redis, but it doesn't know Kubernetes. Helm charts know Kubernetes, but they don't know Redis. So it's like this policy where like uh, Helm charts uh, can only do Kubernetes things, and and Redis Sentinel can only do Redis things. We thought there should be a better middle layer in this, right? Where it knows Redis, it knows how to manage Dragonfly, but also it is aware of the Kubernetes APIs, how to how to configure them, how to listen to events, etc. And that's where we landed on this idea around. Uh, the Dragonfly operator, right? To build an operator that runs and manages Dragonfly instances for users on Kubernetes. So let us first yeah, go through the goals, right? Yeah, just like Dragonfly, even the operator is open source. You can check it out. The GitHub repository is open source. 
Uh, and then, uh, so, f so the goal of the Dragonfly operator is to manage the underlying stateful set resources of each Dragonfly, right? So example, uh, in a company, there could be multiple teams, and each, want, each team wants their own like a Dragonfly instance. One single Dragonfly operator should be able to lay, uh, maintain multiple Dragonfly instances uh, uh, and their underlying stateful set, right? Because uh, Dragonfly is a stateful machine, right? It, it keeps, uh, or Redis, it's, it is essentially storing its state in memory, and when, it, uh, and when it shuts down, it essentially writes into a disk and tries to yeah, load it back up, yeah, just like Redis. Uh, and the other goal is to ha always have a healthy master, right? So this is a very Redis and in-memory store thing, right? Which, so you can't just have one Redis instances, right? Because even though like the uh, major use case for Redis or Dragonfly is caching, a lot of applications use it uh, more for real-time data, right? For example, a lot of like gaming companies, sessions, etc. Any real-time data, uh, Redis is a popular use case because they, uh, all the session management, etc., is stored in Redis for faster retrieval and all of those things. So, so this means you need to have like a Redis instance always running, uh, and and even like during any failures, you should be able to automatically fail over onto a uh, onto onto another Redis instance, right? It should not uh, you you should not have like a manual intervention there. It should all be automatic. You should have a replica, and if the master goes down, you should you should just like fall back to replica with all the data, and and should all, and it should all work. And one of the important parts of the operator is to do this. And then the other important part is to uh, is to do up, is to allow upgrades of Dragonfly, right? Uh, so any stateful application uh, upgrades would be complicated, right? Because uh, there's there should be essentially a rollout procedure to through which how you how your clients are updated about the whole upgrade happening, and also that like after the upgrade you have the same data and you and you and you did not lose uh, data during that transition. So so stateful applications do need some hand holding and essentially this is the reason why we have like the whole thing about like stateful set the naming conventions the upgrades being like very different from like an yeah, from like a deployment right in kubernetes mm. so and in the same way dragonfly operator also uh, also does some betterments uh, in, in the whole upgrade path essentially to 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 have no data loss and also to do a better job than like plain upgrades plain like stateful set uh, applies so, so before we dive into like the code base of the Dragonfly operator, how do operators even work? Uh, so, an operator is essentially uh, it is doing uh, three main things, right? First, it is watching for a declarative requested state. So, for example, when you apply a deployment onto a Kubernetes cluster, it's a it's a it's a requested state by the user, right? The user is asking for a deployment of this many configuration, all of that, and and Kubernetes does that job, right? Uh, it's essentially it, essentially it essentially applies that into the resources other, on the other side. So essentially, the operator is also the same way, but for custom resources, right? Not the resources of of Kubernetes, but new resources essentially. So it watches on those resources, and then uh, it it manages uh, it manages other resources on the other side. And there's also a, a status component to this whole thing, right? Because because operators are not stateful. They are stateless by default. They have to store their state somewhere to know like wh what all are they doing, what's the status of each each requested state, etc. So they use the status field in the custom resource uh, definition to to do all of this. We'll see that uh, in the demo. Uh, on, and on the other side, we have managed resources which the operator is maintaining. So let's take an example uh, of this talk, right? Uh, so here. It's a custom resource first. Uh, it's not available on any Kubernetes cluster. It is specific to the Dragonfly operator. The Dragonfly operator essentially manages a resource called the Dragonfly. Hence, you see the uh, line around kind your Dragonfly. Uh, it has a name, and then it has its own like configuration fields, right? There's the number of replicas uh, of Dragonfly and the uh, and the resources for each Dragonfly instance. So, so this is the example of the declared state, right? This is the custom resource that we're talking about. Uh, but before we even like talk about custom resource, yeah, there's the whole thing uh, around the definition, right? This has the same relation as like a class and object in any programming language, right? Like class is the is the declarative is the definition of the is, is the schema. 
But then, like the Dragonfly or the custom resource is like an implementation of the schema, right? It is one instance of the of the custom resource like definition. Here, you on the left, you, you know, this is the custom resource called Dragonfly, and on the right, we have the custom resource definition, which is the which is the definition of the Dragonfly type, right? Essentially, uh, it's a bunch of thing. Uh, uh, you're telling Kubernetes th that there's a new resource called the Dragonfly that it should be aware about from now. Uh, and it has all these fields. Uh, the plural form is called dragonflies, and uh, and a lot of things like that. You could uh, we also pass the open AI, open API. Sorry, all the chat about open AI. Uh, we also pass the open API v3 schema here. Essentially, used to validate those objects, right? Whenever the user applies an, uh, uh, a resource of the type dragonfly, uh, we essentially validate on the open API, uh, open API schema and then validate the resource. Uh, so, so essentially, the architecture would be would be this, right? So, on the API server, we apply the objects, and and the dra and the Dragonfly operator does some magic, and and creates a cache uh, like a pod on the other side, right? It's not a pod; it's a stateful set, like we discussed, and a service that the user can use to talk to it. But essentially, uh, there's a lot of yeah, yeah, magic in the operator, and and it and it can add like more instances of it, right? You can ask a new Dragonfly resource for Maybe for your front-end team, and it will create a new resource, uh, new stateful set, new service to back the to back all of that up, and the clients can start using the uh, using the instance. So now, uh, uh, if you see what the magic is about internally, it is two things, right? Uh, essentially, for the Dragonfly operator, uh, but like like in, uh, like many things, right? Operators can be yeah, built in many ways. This is one way that we went about it, but. Uh, there's no one like one right way. It all makes sense like uh, based on your use case, etc. In our case, though, we have like two reconcilers in the whole operator yeah, thing, right? One is the Dragonfly uh, reconciler, and the other is the Pod lifecycle uh, uh, reconciler. We'll talk what each of the uh, each of those things do. Uh, we'll also look at the code. Mm. Uh, mm, yeah. Now let's do a demo first. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, so we we spoke about a uh, about a bunch of things. Uh, we, yeah, before we do any of it, can you see the code? Is the font good? Mm. Zoom. Yeah, this is good. So first, I have a uh, I have a kind cluster here, and if I do cubic, you'll get pods. Uh, there's nothing on this cluster. Essentially, the bare bones, uh, whatever kind gives you. Now let's install the operator first, right? Uh, the operator manifests are present. Uh, in this folder called the yeah, yeah, manifest, we look at what the operator yeah, gets it with, right? So if you see, it essentially it creates a namespace first, and then it creates the custom resource definition that we spoke about, the schema of the of the custom resource called Dragonfly, and there are a bunch of RBAC stuff, right? So essentially, the operator has to have the required permissions to create the underlying stateful thread, to to create the underlying secrets, to create the underlying service, all of that. So it needs a bunch of your permissions to all of that. And this is the RBAC that we get. And this is the operator itself, right? The operator itself is a stateful, is not a stateful application. So it's a deployment. It doesn't need any of the fancy stuff. So now that uh, we have the we have it installed, now if we do a cubic tail get CRDs, right? Any all the custom resource uh, resource definitions, you can see that we, we have the new resource called the Dragonfly. Now let's apply uh, uh, apply a sample uh, resource, right? Uh, here I have like a example. Uh, so here we have like the kind equal to dragonfly. This is a bunch of labels. The labels are are not important. Uh, and here is the actual spec of the dragonfly instance, right? We are essentially asking for two replicas with a specific set of resource requirements, right? Uh, these are like the same CPU and memory requests, right? And then you can pass that. Uh, so now let's apply that, right? Uh, if we do cubic tail apply, this is part of the config. Yeah, samples. Now you should see that uh, a dragonfly sample uh, has been uh, created. Now if you watch for the pods, right? You can see that we, sh we are getting two pods automatically uh, created one after the other. Uh, now if we see what all. Uh, uh, the dragonfly. Uh, now, if we see uh, cubic tail get uh, dragonfly, 
If you do a dragonflies, you should see that we have a dragonfly sample that we just ask for it. And you can also do cubectl describe a dragonfly, dragonfly sample. You can see that uh, uh, we have the same resource, but there are a bunch of events that the operator has been doing. Uh, it has created resources, and it also, ha it also did a bunch of other things. Let's not talk about it first. We'll, we'll go to them later. So essentially, as you saw, the operator has created a bunch of things. And who did that, right? That's where uh, I, we can go back to our slides where this is the, uh, this is the job of the Dragonfly reconciler, right? Uh, so, so before that, actually, let's look at the code, right? Mm. So essentially, operators are built uh, using the Cube Builder framework, right? Like Cube Builder uh, is a popular framework to build and manage operators, essentially. Uh, and we use the same stuff. I, uh, we use Cube Builder to essentially uh, write the operator. It's a framework to write uh, to write Kubernetes operators. And even Cube Builder internally uses uh, the client go uh, to, to essentially talk to the API server. And if you see the the code base, we have uh, we have two important we have the main important thing here, right? We are essentially attaching two two things into the manager. One is the uh, uh, your Dragonfly reconciler, and then the other is the DF pod lifecycle reconciler. So what's the job of the Dragonfly reconciler, right? The job of the Dragonfly reconciler is to create stateful sets and services for each Dragonfly resource you are requested. When a user asks for the Dragonfly resource, it goes ahead and creates the stateful set and the services you are required. Now if you see the code of the Dragonfly resource it's reconciler itself, essentially, uh, before we go into the reconcile loop, so so each reconciler essentially has one single method that it runs for each event, right? And what is an event that it gets? So the Dragonfly reconciler listens for the type called Dragonfly, which has it should, and then it owns two things, right? It owns the stateful set and the service uh, to back the Dragonfly resource up. So how does it create that? That happens in the reconcile loop, right? So we get a request of type. Uh, the control dot request, and we try to get the DF object underlying that. Once we get the DF object underlying, uh, there are three essential things that we do here, right? First, uh, if the if the status of the dragonfly is nothing, then we create resources, right? We essentially translate the dragonfly object into a bunch of the resources, and here you can see we create a stateful set. And also, there are a bunch of fields that you can set, right? TLS secrets, annotations, a lot of things. And then we also, we also back that up with a service. The service is what the user would use to talk to Dragonfly, the database, essentially. Uh, and then we just apply those resources. We update the status field, and then just exit, right? So that's what just happened. Now, if we go back to our code, uh, we'll see that uh, we create uh, a stateful set and also a service uh, backing, res backing these resources up. Uh, now, now, now let's talk to the Dragonfly instance itself, right? So because we are outside the cluster, uh, I'm running a, a Redis pod and I'm giving it the URL of the Dragonfly sample dot default, right? Default is the namespace, Dragonfly sample is the resource. And now if I, if I, run, if I run this command, I'll get a Redis client uh, command that I can use to talk to the Dragonfly instance. So uh, it's downloading the Redis image, I think. It's... Yeah, now that we have the prompt, so let's, uh, let's put some data, right? Let's do set event, and we'll call it cube day. Now if I do get event, we see that the data is, is there, and let's exit that container. So, uh, so we were successfully able to create a Dragonfly instance, talk to it, insert some data, and come back. So, so before we go ahead, uh, the important thing to note is that we asked for two replicas here, two instances of dra uh, one instance of Dragonfly with two replicas, right? The Dragonfly sample zero and one. Uh, so, but with Redis and Dragonfly, there's only one master all the time, right? And then the other pods would be replicas, right, to fail over in the event of a problem. So, so. In our case, in which pod did we write our data into? So, so this is how. So, uh, we do this uh, through labels, right? Uh, there's this uh, label called the role, replica, and the master. And if you if you run these commands, you can see which pod is replica and which pod is master. 
and the service essentially always points to describe service and the and the service would always point to the role equal to master so the users are only talking to the master the replica is always like catching up with the data from the master uh, and and now what happens if we delete the master uh, we saw that dragonfly sample 0 is the master now if we if we delete the pod uh, the master has gone down now if we do cubic tl get pods role equal to master we we automatically see that sample 1 has gotten the role equal to master label who updated that this is the job of the operator essentially this means now if we go and run the cubic tl run on the on the same instance even though we deleted the master we should when we do get event we should still see the data because uh, the operator automatically saw that the pod went down and then it automatically upgraded the other replica as the master and now if we go back and see uh, what all pods are replicas now if we do cubit get pods role equal to replica we see that sample 0 is now the new replica which means once it once the pod came back the operator automatically also marked the new pod as the, as a replica to the to the new master so whose job is all of this and this is where the pod life cycle yeah, you can say right the second uh, thing in the in, in the diagram so essentially uh, the 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 responsibility of the pod pod life cycle the reconciler is to listen for pod events right all pod events and then see if the, if the, uh, if it is related to dragonfly and see that uh, if there is any problem if the master is going down then update a replica as a master if there is a new replica if there is a new dragonfly pod mark it as a replica so all the uh, all the logic around new pods and deletion of pods right so now look uh, and then it listens to the pod events and then it runs dragonfly commands on those pods to essentially make them as a master or as a replica essentially so 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 so, so this is the, the thing that i started the talk with right the dragonfly operator knows about dragonfly the redis commands etc and it also knows kubernetes api so it's, it's it knows both the things and, and this is how we bake the business logic of dragonfly into the kubernetes layer in a way so now let's look at the code, right? How how this works, the dragonfly pod life cycle. So essentially, if you look at the code here, the pod life cycle uh, reconciler listens for pod events. Only that. But it only uh, listens for pod events with the label, with the custom app name label called dragonfly, so that it can filter out, right? It, it doesn't have to li uh, listen to all pod events in the cluster. There are some application pods that the operator doesn't care about, etc. So it filters that down into the pods with the labels uh, dragonfly, only the ones with this label. And then whenever it, ge whenever it gets a request, it first checks if the if the pod has a label, right? We check if the pod has a role label. If not, then we, we configure uh, uh, if the pod doesn't have a label, first we check if the face is resources are created, right? Then we have a new problem around. We have to configure replication itself, right? There was no master, no replica, etc. But uh, if the face is ready, then we got a pod restart from a Dragonfly instance, right? Then we check if the master exists. If, if there is a master, then we configure uh, it as a replica to the master. If there is no master, then it means that uh, we need to call, we need to create a new master itself. So it goes ahead and runs a function around like configuring your replication itself. Uh, and if you see the example of like you're configuring the pod as a replica, you see that it runs a bunch of commands. Replica of it uses the Redis Go library, uh, the GoLang Redis client, and then uh, runs the command called the slave off, and then it updates the labels like I mentioned, right? Uh, it updates the role equal to replica for the pod, and then it updates the pod its pod resource itself. So the Dragonfly pod life cycle reconciler essentially is responsible for all pod events. And then it filters down to the Dragonfly pod events. And then on that, based on the status of the pod, if it has a replica role, uh, uh, if it has a role rep if it has a label role, then uh, if it doesn't have a label role, then it, it, it makes sure that if there is a master, it, it configures this pod as a replica to the master. If there is no master, then it makes the replica itself as the new master. So it has all the logic around pod life cycles. 
so any time a pod goes down, right? So, so for example, let's take an example where we have one master and replica. The master went down. The pod lifecycle control, the reconciler gets a request, and then it, it checks if there is a master. No, we don't have a master. So it will make the replica as the new master, and it will configure this pod as the replica to that master. So essentially, the whole topology around who's the master and the replica is controlled by the pod lifecycle the controller. Uh, now, uh, we saw this. So the other important part that the Dragonfly uh, the, so that the Dragonfly operator does is the upgrades, right? Uh, so, so like we discussed, because this is a, a stateful set, the Dragonfly operator knows better on how to upgrade a Dragonfly instance, right? If there is a master and replica, the operator, any, any, any Kubernetes operator or even a human operator would know that they would first need to upgrade the pod, uh, the replica, right? Why hit the master first? Once you have the replica ready with all the new data, then you would go to the master, upgrade it, and then now your cluster is all good. So, so, so the Dragonfly uh, operator, is a, operator essentially yeah, tries to do the same. This is part of the same, uh, same Dragonfly reconciler, right? Uh, when, you, when you trigger an update, an update could be, so let's do the demo, right? If you go here, now let's do an update, right? I want to make the CPU request lower, right? Uh, I've updated the resource, now let's apply it. Now, now that we saw that it is updating, the, the upgrade lifecycle would first start with a replica. So here, 0 was the replica. So it's starting from a replica. It, it deleted that. And then once we, once we have the 0 pod back up, and also, uh, and also as a ready replica again, right? Because uh, when, you, when you terminate the sample 0, it lost all its data. When the new sample zero came in with the new resource requirements, it has to again be backed up the, by the data from the master. And once that is ready, then the operator triggers the update for your sample one. As we saw, sample one was just terminated. Now it's getting back up. In this meanwhile, we saw that when the master is, master is being deleted, the replica has to be the new master. So that has already been done. So now if we go back and see who's the master with the role equal to master, uh, we see that sample 0 is now the master again. Now if we run the same command to get the data, right? Now if we do uh, get event, the data was persisted even during this whole rollout, right? Like uh, we started with a replica, we deleted that, uh, we got a new replica. Uh, with the new configuration, and then we updated the master. The master went down. Uh, the replica got promoted as the master, and the and the new ma the old master is now a replica to the new master, and the data is still all there. So, so this is the thing that we are talking about, right? The transition around like upgrades is now carried out by the operator, uh, because it knows how best to do that. And how does this happen? So, essentially, if you look at the code, right? First, if we check if the if the stateful set's uh, pod spec has changed, right? Only, only some some kind of like configuration updates require a rollout, right? Not all up updates are the same. So, for example, if you add a new label, uh, they don't require like a whole uh, uh, restart of the pod, but only some things do, and and we only do that when those happen. So, essentially, we update the the status field to is rolling update, and then uh, we reply back. Now, when now we rerun the reconcile loop. We are here, right? We see that uh, the, uh, the rolling update is happening. We'll first list out all the parts of a uh, part of this Dragonfly instance. Uh, we then start with the replicas, right? We check if it is on the, uh, if it is on the latest version. Uh, uh, we first want all the current replicas to be, to be ready with the data, right? With the old data. When they are ready, we, we then start terminating uh, uh, each replica, right? We start with the replicas, and then once we terminate all the replicas, and then they are back up and again configured as replica to the existing master. Uh, then we move on to the master, we delete the master, and then the master, when we delete the master, one of the replica is already upgraded as the new master, and then the old master now comes back as a replica to this, to this Dragonfly instance. 
So that's how we do a rollout of the of the whole thing while making sure that uh, we understand Redis. We, we use Redis command. So even in this example here, we when we update the master, right? We we, we do that using the repl takeover command. The repl takeover command is a custom command specific to Dragonfly, where it logs the master uh, during this transition so that the client is not writing anything, and then the master is released so that even the clients are aware of until which point the data was inserted and available. So this we do this uh, uh, using this uh, using this field called the update resource uh, strategy. Uh, so on a stateful set, you can, you, you can set this on delete stateful set strategy, which means the stateful set is not automatically upgraded by Kubernetes. Uh, so when, a, uh, when you apply a new change, it doesn't do anything. And once the operator is responsible here to delete the pods, the underlying pods, when when the when the operator po, when when the operator like deletes the old pod, now Kubernetes just creates a new pod with the new configuration. Uh, so without the operator deleting the pod, your Kubernetes doesn't do anything on an up, on an update. So this is the this is the use of like the on delete stateful set upgrade strategy, right? Where where Kubernetes like doesn't do anything when an update to a stateful set is given. Uh, it waits until someone deletes the pod, and then it creates the new pod with new configuration, so that the order of the upgrade and also when to do what is left to the operator here. So we use that logic in Kubernetes to essentially prevent the Kubernetes from doing the whole upgrade. Uh, so those are the three things that we do with the operator, with the Dragonfly operator. Like I said, the code is open source. Uh, if you want to contribute, if you want to look at it, it's all there. Uh, and that's the talk. Yeah, thank you.